Hello and welcome to CS11. This is lecture number eight, in which we'll discuss the while command. The while command is used to create a loop in a program. A loop is used to repeat a portion of your program multiple times until some specific goal is reached. Loops are important for calculations that require repeated steps. A while command looks like this. While condition and opening and closing braces. The condition is a logical expression, something that can evaluate to true or false. So you see that a while loop looks a lot like an if command. The primary difference is in an if command, the condition is evaluated once, and if it's true, the code here is executed, and if not, the code is skipped. But in a while loop, the condition is evaluated, and if it's true, then the code is evaluated, and then the condition is evaluated again. And as long as the condition remains true, the code that's in here will repeatedly execute. And the idea is that the condition that you set up, you would want to have eventually become false. Now, it's an error if that condition never becomes false. Let me show you an example. Let's create an integer variable, int a equals 10, and here I'll say while a is less than 100, c out a end line. Okay, now here I have a loop where this condition here will never become false. This is an example of what's called an infinite loop. and it's a very bad thing to have in your program. The standard form of a while loop, in addition to the condition, is that before you enter into the loop, that you would typically do some kind of initialization, something that prepares you to get into the loop. And towards the bottom of the while loop, you have typically have something called an increment, something that involves altering the value or values that the conditions are based upon so that eventually you can uh, reach your goal and then exit the loop. When the loop becomes false and you exit the loop, then execution continues on with the code that comes after the loop, just like you would see in an if command. All right, let's write a sample program that uses a while loop to accomplish its goal. The goal of this particular program is going to be to extract the digits of an integer. Okay, let's create a couple of integer variables. I'll create one called n and one called digit. Both of those variables are going to be assigned values before their first use, so I'm not going to initialize them. Okay, let's ask the user for some input. Enter an integer. Okay, so the user's going to enter an integer. And actually, why don't we be more specific? When I run your programs, if you're clear, I can follow the directions when I run your programs. Okay, let's put in a while loop. And here we'll say while n is greater than 0. Okay. And then at the bottom of the loop, n equals n divided by 10. All right, so n is going to be a value that's input by the user. Here it is. It's an integer. Our loop is going to loop while n is greater than 0. And then at the bottom of the loop, we're going to divide n by 10. Now, remember, this is integer division. And so that means that this value will eventually get 0. All right, I got a warning because I haven't used the digit variable yet. That's okay. We'll be using that in a little bit. Let's run the program, enter positive integer 145. Now, notice that the program ended. It couldn't have ended if it hadn't made it through that loop so that we can see that that successive division by 10 is eventually going to cause n to reach 0. Okay, well, now let's use that digit variable. And we are going to use the modulus operator, the percent sign. 
Previously, we've used several arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, the asterisk, and division, the slash. And today I want to show you a fifth one, modulus, or the percent sign, which gives you the remainder of integer division. So here when I say digit equals n percent, or mod 10, that's going to divide n by 10 and assign the remainder to digit. The remainder will have to be somewhere in the range of 0 through 9. It'll be 0 if 10 divides into n equally. Otherwise, there will be a remainder somewhere in the range of 1 through 9. The remainder can't be 10 or higher, because then 10 would have divided an additional time into n. All right, now here, let's see out the digit and a space. And then after the loop, I'll see out an end line. All right, let's recompile the program and run. Enter a positive integer, 19,567. And notice the program now extracts the digits from that number, and here you can see them in reverse order. 7, 6, 5, 9, 1. So here, our first example of using a while loop, in this case, in order to do some numeric processing.